So good evening, ladies and gentlemen. In our series that we are filming right now on disappearing in Iceland, we are going to present to you tonight the, in front of the Hotel Bidzur, one of the most famous uh, artistic haunts for uh, Iceland, uh, a special program on the disappearing of Erik Deutschmann, the famous animal documentary maker, who was here in Iceland making a very special, unique film, as he always does, and we are investigating his disappearance, which took place a year ago. So we will now enter Hotel Bidzur to find out a little bit more what happened. Please. To those who are familiar with his work, uh, Eric Deutschmann was someone who was fascinated by wildlife, animals, insects. He was a very patient man, someone who thoroughly investigated what he was working on. He just disappeared. But it was nothing like I thought it would be. You're a bit off. I'm not very sane. He was, he was running around on the beach, looking on his watch all the time. And uh, I think there are some seals around here. Perhaps he was uh, looking for the seals, but afraid about the tides or something. I don't know. But he was very frantic. At first, you didn't think uh, about this person because you know him only from television. But when you see him, uh, it could be. So we have really wonderful information about the Deutschmann case in, in the figure of some tapes that were found in his hotel room before he disappeared. So, just here on the floor behind the table. And so I'm now about to examine and analyze this material that Eric Deutschmann left behind him during his stay here in Iceland. Shit! Verdammte Scheiße nochmal! Okay, we have noch 48 hours, so no story to tell. It seems to be off season. No fishermen, no fish. I have no clue what to tell the people tomorrow. Okay. Okay. Damn it! As I looked over the material, I noticed that he seemed to be preparing a film, some material he was looking over. He seemed to be searching for an idea, looking for inspiration, getting up close to the wildlife. I could not understand what was going on. So I tried to gather more clues and went back to Hotel Budir, the last spot he was seen, to interview more people that had spoken with him last. After a few days, like depressed or something, drinking a lot. He was very, you know, quiet, but yeah, a little bit strange. So I had the opportunity in my investigation to find a bit of interview that the local Icelandic television station tried to yes, do with what him. Is it? It's for an interview. Oh no, thank you. I'm really not in the mood right now. I have to get prepared for my noise and make a short documentary. So please don't interview. You don't have any interview time no, at all? No, I have no time. No? Sorry. Really no time. I have to prepare something for tomorrow and for the day after tomorrow. Uh, by the way, do you know, uh, are they still fishing for whales here? I have no idea. I have to find out. I have so many questions and no information. What yet. are you working on? Oh, it's, it's a documentary about animals. But a short, very short documentary. As my investigation progressed into the disappearance of Erik Deutschmann, I really started finding out more and more information about his final two weeks and found out that he was actually involved in quite a particular event called Grétir Cabaret, which is a kino movement cabaret that involves making movies in 72 hours. As you can see, there's a big rock um, that was uh, built up by men, um, very similar to a whale. And I uh, was honored to uh, learn that he was going to uh, participate in uh, the uh, cabaret. Uh, unfortunately, after a trip going up north to document some animal and fauna and 
He never came back. We have here in our species uh, that is uh, un uh, very undiscovered until now. It's uh, the Iceland sheep. So they're waiting for us. We will just uh, take, make an interview because we have an appointment with them. Could you please come over here if you want to make an interview with you? Hello. Oh. Yeah, they already pooed a little bit. So I have me just maybe we go for whales again. We've seen a uh, sheep that is panicking. Um, it has lost his um, the rest of the group, the the others. What it cannot see is that it has to cross the street because uh, his um, parents and sisters and um, brothers are standing here, eating very quietly. They don't care for the the other uh, sheep that is panicking. So that's quite a sad story here. And we move on. Huh? So I needed to speak with the people that he had last seen doing the movies here in Reykjavik. Well, there was this uh, one guy that uh, was uh, into documentaries and he served like a, I don't know, like a, I don't know where he was from, like a, he's a sort of pretty famous and like uh, why, why was he at Greater Cabaret, I don't know. No preparation time. Me. Yeah. Erich Deutschmann. No movie. It has its dangers on the mind because it, the, the experience is so intense and it's so you go in places in your mind you wish you'd never known existed and you're stuck there for at least 72 hours and if, if your movie doesn't get out you have the risk of staying stuck there, stuck in this dark place in your mind forever. that what it can remind us and remind young and not so young filmmakers is of the importance of being coherent, having a thorough preparation, pre-production, an idea, and especially a good end.